Hi everybody, John Bailey here, gemstone artist and founder of the International Faceting Academy. Welcome back to our studio and another video on the art and science of faceting precious gemstones. Welcome today to the Topaz Cleavage versus Fractures video. Today we're going to go head to head with is it a cleavage or is it a fracture? And uh, it covered some of this material in the Topaz Cleavage video. I'll have a link to that in the description below. And I recommend going and watching that. This short video is specifically just cleavages versus fractures. Which is it? What are we looking at? So I hope you enjoy and I hope this carries your fastening rough evaluation skills forward. Let's have a look. Here's a nice big crystal with a nice termination and nice prism faces here. We can see growth lines down the prism faces. So figuring out where the cleavage plane is on this crystal, really easy. Here's our growth lines. The termination of the crystal is really obvious. The long direction of the crystal is obvious. The cleavage plane will be running perpendicular to the termination, straight across here. And when we look really close at the end, Here's our shiny terraced effect. And this little surface also flashing, showing us the cleavage plane. Turn it to the end. Great big shiny flat surface. The terracing effect. And a little iridescence here for this little flake that's open. Super obvious. This is a no-brainer. What we do see that could be tricky is this little shiny area right here inside the crystal. And when I shadow with my hand from the side, you see it goes dark. It's actually reflecting light from this side over here. So I'm blocking it, I'm shadowing it, and it's turning dark. That's a reflective surface inside the crystal. And that's offering to trick us because we might mistake it for a cleavage plane. Here it is, relatively flat. These are shadows. It's shadowing now from the light on the white paper. And when we get the correct angle, here we're getting some iridescence from it, this little green flash. This is more iridescence flashing now from the other side because I've turned it 180 degrees. This iridescent flash right here, this green, that's that shiny surface inside the crystal. Here's our shiny view of it right here. See this glassy, fractured surface inside? It's almost flat. It almost would invite an unpracticed eye to think that it's a cleavage plane. It's not. It's a fracture. The cleavage plane is right here. This is perpendicular to the cleavage plane. It comes right to it, right here. Travels inside the stone, and if we look really carefully, we'll see this dark line going at an angle right here. So this crystal is split up the middle by a fracture. There's a little clue of it right here. This crystal is split up the middle by a fracture, not a cleavage plane. Topaz has one cleavage. This is it. So this is just a warning every shiny surface that you find inside the stone is not necessarily a cleavage. It could just be a fracture and the fracture can be fairly flat looking. This is not flat enough to be a cleavage plane. If you look really close it's too wavy, it bends here. Not a cleavage plane. Cleavage planes are flat. Here's another large crystal looking at it on the prisms. Here's our termination and this has some more trickiness in it. Here's our definite cleavage plane. It's really obvious. It's right across the C-axis. And here's our cleavage plane with bright shiny areas, the typical little terracing that you quite often see, this iridescence here, and there's another interesting bit of iridescence if we look, if we tilt it just right. We see this iridescence right here. 
that's not on this end of the crystal. That iridescence is in the far end. It's up in the termination end of the crystal. And we're actually getting a flash right here off of the cleavage plane that's actually on the far end of the crystal. You can see my pointer on those little surfaces. So that iridescence is actually this little opening in the cleavage plane right here. This specimen is also interesting because it's got some little fractures here and here and some down the c-axis of the growth direction of the crystal right along our growth lines. These are not cleavages. They're strain, they're parallel but they're parallel because of the growth lines of the crystal. There's only one cleavage. Here it is. These are perpendicular. That doesn't mean these might not be a problem. I would definitely look at this in planning to cut this. I would be concerned about are these going to come loose? Is there some strain in the crystal? I would be doing a few other things to examine this before cutting it. Here's a great piece of topaz for our cleavage versus fracture showdown. This area here is obviously open. You can see a reflection from inside the stone, and it goes right around this corner. We see a lot of iridescence starting to show right here. And as we tilt this around, we'll get a lot more. So one of the things we want to remember is that iridescence does not equal cleavage. Iridescence just equals open. So it's open inside here. That's what we're getting the iridescence from. It's not necessarily a cleavage just because it's iridescent. Our clue here is the unevenness of this margin, this ripple effect, and we can see inside where it's open. The reflections from inside are also jagged. As we turn the corner, this margin again, this is ripply, it's uneven. As it crosses the stone, it's undulating and moving at an angle. You can see it wrap around this other corner. Again, lots of iridescence. And this jagged margin is kind of a clue. Uh, usually that's going to be a fracture, not a cleavage. We see almost parallel lines here, but they're not nice and neat and parallel. This is ripply and jagged, both sides. Another clue about fractures is that you usually see stain like this, this iron stain, penetrating into a fracture. You don't as often see that penetrating into a cleavage. It's not impossible, it's just not as common. So this is most certainly a fracture. And if we were looking at this for preparing rough for cutting, we would attack this with nippers and just break this along the existing fracture pull this piece off and there's certainly a clean area here for cutting. There's some nice interesting inclusions here. I'm not sure exactly what they are, but uh, interesting. I believe this piece was collected by some mates of mine in the Northern Territory of Australia. Uh, that's, that's my belief about the origin of the stone. Here we have a tremendous amount of iridescence, huge, huge iridescence showing here. And this surface is relatively flat, and it has some interesting telltale terracing effect right here. That kind of suggests that terracing, even though this is a kind of a conchoidal fracture, this terracing at the edge, that suggests that this might be on or close to the cleavage. So if we turn it in this direction, what we see is a nice straight line on this side and a nice straight line on this side. If we rotate just a little, we see we have two parallel planes over here, and that's pretty strongly suggestive of a cleavage. So we're going to begin to guess that maybe this iridescence is from an open cleavage, and we'll pursue that a little bit in a minute. For now, we look at this little surface feature here, and it looks like it could be another crack. If we tilt this just right, we'll see some stain penetrating into the stone. We see another jagged edged piece here, and this jagged edge goes right around the corner and wraps upward, and it looks like an iron stain going penetrating into the stone. So this looks like another fracture. Again, 
something that's jagged and it's not parallel to the other feature nearby. When we rotate this around a little bit, we get this reflection right here from inside the stone. That's this fracture as it penetrates beyond the iron stain. We can see part of it reflecting here, part of it reflecting here. When we change the angle, we can get another a better view of it. All of this is reflecting because the bottom of this is an open fracture penetrating up into the stone. This crisscrosses with this nice straight line right here. That's a cleavage plane. Why do we know? Because it's ruler straight. It's straight across. It's parallel to all these other surfaces. And if we look at this line, it goes straight into the stone, certainly until it hits this fracture and then it hooks. Here we track the line around the stone. If we rotate it so that the cleavage operates to create a shadow instead of a reflection, we can see the edge and that it's a straight line. On the surface it's ruler straight. And we can see how far it's open by looking at the iridescence. It's open all the way across the stone. It's really quite a beautiful specimen, just as it is. This is the other side, looking at that cleavage. And one of the clues is when we move it so that the cleavage reflects light, rather than casting a shadow, here. We can see that this is a very flat surface inside the stone. Straight edge, straight line and flat surface as compared to this undulating surface inside the stone here. We can tell with our eye that this is a very irregular surface where when we get a good reflection on this piece it's flat like a piece of glass inside the stone. Here's cleavage, here's fracture. One of the interesting pieces about this is that this iridescence looks really shallow. It appears almost on the surface here, but it's actually two-thirds of the way across the stone is where that light is coming from. That iridescence is coming from two-thirds of the way across the stone. And that's something to remember in any faceting material, and especially as we move up the refractive index that effect will be increased from stone to stone. We have another really interesting piece also from Australia. And the first thing that catches our eye is this big shiny area. Oh wow, maybe that's a cleavage. Um, if we look at it really close and we reflect light off of it. There's no nice neat terracing here. It's all undulating, conchoidal, ripply looking. It's all uneven. There's no flat sheet of glass like look. There's a few little lines here that look like they could be terracing, but I'm unconvinced. Even though that surface is parallel to this surface. I look at this surface very carefully and it's not super flat. It's undulating. And there's no moonstone effect to be seen here. There's no telltale latent tiny pieces of cleavage plane reflecting light. There's no terraced lines anywhere on this surface or anywhere near it. So if we continue to look at the rest of the stone, we do have this really flat area right here. Notice how all the levels of this area, and here's some terracing lines, more terracing lines here. They're kind of fine, but you can see them. Little terracing effect. Terracing lines here, a lot of them. And one of the things we notice is that all the levels, even though none of this is shiny, all the levels of this terraced area when they reflect light, 
They reflected all at once. They were all parallel. Compare, contrast that with this. It's bright and shiny, but it's definitely conchoidal, ripply. So this is actually the cleavage plane right here. So if we turn that downward, it suggests that this was once the termination of our crystal. What about fractures in this piece? It's easy to see that there's a line here and rust stain penetrating there, so there's a flake. Here's a reflection from inside. So this little area that's heavily stained, this is going to flake off. Here's a small internal fracture right here. It's in shadow from this direction. It's creating shadow. And we're going to have another great example of how when one of these reflects, notice how far this is from the surface. It's at least halfway into the stone from this surface here. When we rotate this just right, this reflection right here, and when I tip it, it lights up. That's this. get close to it and we can see it light up still through this surface right here. See it's starting to light up right there? That little reflection, it's casting a beam of light that's projecting onto this surface right here. And we're seeing a reflection from this fracture projected to this surface and it looks really shallow and it looks actually bigger than it is because it's throwing a projection. This piece has another really fun another really fun fracture. Here we have it lighting up reflection right here. This is not from that piece. We're edge on to that now. This reflection is from this. This is a flake. This is a flat flake. Here's the edge of the crack. Here's an edge that's a little bit chipped. It travels around. This area right here Here we can get the other side inside of it to light up a little bit right across here. This is a flat flake. It's very shallow. I wouldn't saw this in preparing it for cutting. I would grind it off. It's that shallow. But it can cast quite a reflection to the far side of the stone like this and it can trick our eye and make us think there's a much larger problem inside there than really exists. So this is cleavage versus fracture and fracture masquerading as cleavage. This is part of the topaz cleavage versus fracture showdown. Thanks for joining me for the topaz cleavage versus fracture showdown video. This should help you differentiate between fractures and cleavages in any material where the possibility is that you could have either one. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope as you carry that knowledge forward in your rough evaluation, it saves you time, aggravation, and money. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and share with your friends. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and hit the bell to make sure you don't miss any of our future content. If you want to see the Topaz cleavage video, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. I look forward to seeing you in the comments and questions and at the Faceting Academy website. Until then, good meets.